Hello everybody, it is Idaho Ambassador yet again. And I am here again at Lost Grove Brewing and I want to give a shout out to Argos Productions for doing our audio and visual, we love you guys. If you need any kind of video or audio done, these guys are champs. And then we're also sitting with my friend Rissa from Naturally Salon, downtown Boise, she's in Bodo. And we just want to thank you all for listening or watching and if you would be so kind, could you give us a little bit of like a background, like who you really are, where'd you come from, how long have you been in Boise, why did you come to Boise, what's, what's your... That's, that's such a big it's question. It's a loaded question. That is so loaded. I guess I would start with, if you don't know me, maybe I'm like a crunchy fashionista. <laughs> like, kind of this weird... What exactly is crunchy though? Well, like, you know, a little earthy. A little, granola, a little yeah I, lo I like to feel the sand beneath my toes okay. and the wind yeah. in my hair but i also admire the finer points of yes fashion and style and the excitement <laughs> of a city yeah um and i found my journey led me back home here to idaho i grew up here in idaho oh, you did? middle of nowhere idaho though where not near high school as boise oh. uh was born in idaho falls our farm is in ryrie oh yes our farm a wheat farm <laughs> <laughs> That's ironic. <laughs> right? I can't yeah. eat any our wheat. wheat farm. I hear that. Not, I mean, not necessarily our farm, but they are coming out with a gluten-free wheat, which I know nothing about. But oh, that we can go on a tangent on that. But I would love to hear about this later. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Um, I was dying to get off farm living the yes. second I was 18, of course, and sounds right. Went to school. My folks were like hell bent on me not being a hairstylist, and so I went down to University of Utah so I could ski for a few years, like who wouldn't sell out for a ski pass when they're 18. I did it. I did it. We're all like, hands are up everywhere. And then I ended up going to hair school at night, just still pursuing my passion. I was chosen to be the student representative for Palm Mitchell School cool. during Sundance Film Festival. What? Crazy luck. Like, I can't believe or I had skill. that kind of luck. Well, at this point I didn't have skill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I fucked up his hair. What? <laughs> Which is the next? <laughs> no kidding. John Paul DeJoria, the owner of Paul Mitchell and Patron Tequila, he's the guy that you think is Paul Mitchell, the dude with the ponytail, yeah. ha came in and had me cut his hair during oh, yeah. Sundance Film Festival. And I'm like- You stayed at his house in Cabo one time. Yes, yes, yeah. I fucked it up. It's not a joke. I, I messed it up. Um, and I thought I was going to throw up simultaneously, which I didn't do that thing called. <laughs> Wait, how did, how, how did you mess it up? Well, I don't even, I just did remember being so nerve-wracked. Did you cut it wrong? I think that, okay, so he's a little thinning and then like has yeah. the ponytail and stuff. And first of all, I was still in school. I didn't know how to do hair. Yeah. Let alone how to do it like a balding man's ponytail. Oh, shit. Sorry, John Paul, I think you're great. Um, and then I think he just wanted it like his fuzzy neckline cleaned up. Yeah. And I just, I, I don't think I understood any of it. And I took it like pretty deep. But. <laughs> yeah, it was it was horrible. During the actual haircut, also, he was telling me like the last person that did my hair, the last person were like he was people projecting. that I idolized. He was projecting. Oh my gosh, it was it was just amazing and hilarious and such like a growth moment when you really had to like bull your way through getting yeah. getting anything done. But oh boy, yeah, I made it through. He took me a hundred dollars, which at the time was a lot. Everything. Yeah, I thought I was like won the lottery, even though you messed it up. Even though I messed it up and wrote me a letter of recommendation in pencil. <laughs> so in case I need to erase this shit. <laughs> That's probably why. Yeah. That's probably why. He's like, like, I gotta change a few yeah. words. It's like, well, maybe not. Um, to go work for the artistic director in San Diego. So yeah. that was kind of like my initial start. I called my mom, like, you're never gonna believe this. She goes, I bet I will. Yeah. Like, packing the dog, we're packing the fish. <laughs> we're, we're moving to San Diego. How do you pack a fish? Oh, well, Bob went everywhere with me. Oh, okay. It's like Bob underwater. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that story's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't make that shit up. No, that's ridiculous. Um, anyway, moved down to San Diego. I worked there uh, with the artistic director and other people in Palm Mitchell for a while. Moved on to a salon that I think is absolutely amazing. Hyde Edwards Salon in San Diego. One of what the coolest I've ever been. Hyde Edwards. Oh. Had a great boss, a great mentor, um, started becoming an educator, traveled the world doing education, did a lot with New York Fashion Week, a lot of different designers. Awesome. 
I create a curriculum and classes and I, I just had such a fun, amazing experience really being able to like one, share my passion with other people and I mean, what's more important than that? That's it's, so exciting. It's like literally a dream. It's so fun. Yeah. And just to be able to like sit down and really relate and get that one-on-one. -on -one. But the other side of that was I was really gathering a lot of data without even knowing it. I met every salon owner. I traveled to salons mm -hmm. and every, like every great high-end salon in every city and really was able to pick the brains of the people who were making these work the right way. Yeah. And that information that I got from teaching was just invaluable. That's cool. And that, yeah, so from there, I opened my own salon because I kind of hit Naturally. my ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <Unintended>. <laughs> that was part two. <laughs> <laughs> Not until I got home here to Idaho, I guess. But um, so I opened Salon on 30th uh, with a business partner there. Yeah. And that unfortunately didn't um, work out. I ended up selling my share and moved home to Idaho. And I'm so excited because I'm doing things the way that I've always envisioned them happening with all of my background and expertise from traveling yeah. and learning and got like, I've just been so fortunate that I had all these amazing opportunities to really gather this wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. that I don't even know if I deserved, but I've, <laughs> I'm certainly fortunate to have and yeah. I'm certainly grateful for all of it and everybody who's played a part in that, but I am finally able to take what I know and what I've seen and pour that into something that I love in such a positive environment where it's just 100% the best way I know how to get things done and the best like with 100% pure intentions which is so rare in this world it and is. you feel it when you walk in and I, that's the feedback that I get from everybody as well like all my clients they're like oh it feels good in here yeah. Before they even know what's going on. You have good on. vibes in there, for sure. Thank you. Definitely have good vibes in there. Thanks, girl. You do. You're, you're a big fan I like of that. it, and I'm, I'm a little high-maintenance to please. I am, too. <laughs> Especially in the salon, yeah. in the salon world, because <laughs> you know. But, well, and, and we don't look at my right hair, but I'm a little bit of a queen about my hair. <laughs> Same. We've both had a long work day. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> the entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Don't think it's easy. It's <laughs> you might look a little frizzy at the end it's, of the day. It happens. Also, it's raining. It is raining. <laughs> so it is humid. We've yeah. had a long day. Yeah. Don't judge our hair. But, okay, so you, how long ago did you move back? Sorry, You're good. Of I mean, I hear, I hear that's really good beer. beer. Which one did you order? Um, this is the honey bear. Oh, and I'm messing it up Oh, already. the teddy bear picnic. Yes, thank you. Teddy bear picnic. No teddy bears were harmed in the making of yeah. teddy bear picnic. <laughs> we're cruelty free. We are cruelty free. The, the biggest pillar of my business. Cruelty <laughs> free, not tested is. on animals. Not yeah, drinking well, teddy as bears. It, as it should be. Yeah. As it should be. Testing, testing beauty products on animals is total bullshit. I want to kill people that do that. Yeah, it's I mean, not, I'm not saying I'm gonna kill anybody. Right, I'm just saying. Of course, it's just completely pointless. Makes you want to torture them. That, that <laughs> I will do. Yeah, it just you know. Well, and stuff for United it's, it's Airlines, just not, it's not us. Yeah, it, right. Oh, oh, oh! oh I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> going on tangent. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, if someone tried to put my dog in a carry-on, like a box, no. or whatever it is, no. Oh, hell no. Yeah, hell no. I'd be not like, Coco. girl, uh, we about to get physical because yeah. neither that dog or should. am I yes. am gonna be on this plane. Right. I'm gonna knock you out. Fair. Like good, good dog mom. Yeah. Oh, good dog mom. I must, yeah. Uh, you know my baby. Mm. Oh, she's so cute. She is. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry about our tangent. What are we talking about? So, okay, so you moved back how long ago? Oh. Yes, I moved back in July. Okay. Uh, was having a bit of culture shock, kind of just finding my way. Was going back to take clients, obviously, in San Diego here and there. Yeah. Um, and I was just taking a breather from my chaotic lifestyle on the road and my yeah. tenure salon and a partnership gone south. It's a lot to deal with. That's a bit, yeah, it's a bit much yeah. um, early on, but yeah, I took a breather and, and I just wanted to explore a few things. I took some art classes and some jewelry classes and uh, I just needed to breathe for a second and Boise is the perfect place, not only just to, to breathe and to branch out and go other places and explore, but it is such a comfortable place to call 
calm and yeah. to like really feel like a little Rooted. more down to earth and yeah. connected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have some we have some good people around here. Yeah. At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some good people. When did you open the salon? So I opened the salon in January. Um, it should have been open. She's fresh meat. So, very fresh meat, yes. Um, should have been open much sooner, but I had some run-ins with the city, of course. Oh, yeah? Um, what did that look like? Well, it's very interesting because this is my second business, and the first one, you know, California is known by Idahoans as, as the like, regulations and the mail. Right, like California's overtaxed and it's over-legislated, yes. and like those damn hippies they don't know what they're doing they're just <laughs> yeah. losing all their money and like yeah. legislating themselves into the ground but my personal experience I mean yes the taxing a lot of my money went out the door yeah. but the flip side of that is it was very supportive of small business and I was expecting things here in Idaho to be very easy to open up and very quick and a little bit less of the like rules that don't make sense sort of thing yeah. and it was so easy to open a salon in San Diego compared to opening a salon and boutique here in Boise. Yeah. Which was shocking. What how Absolutely what shocking. in which capacity was it like difficult? Where were your like where your pitfalls or run ins? There were a lot of hang ups where I, I just didn't expect them. I mean you would obviously expect go over budget for your build out. Go over yeah. like especially when you're creating a high end luxury yeah. salon and boutique, like you're not gonna just go the cheap route you're gonna make it yeah, you beautiful like and feel yeah. great and uh, you're not gonna cut corners so you expect to spend a little bit more with say your plumber say your carpenter say whoever's building you know yeah and a beautiful concrete molding mud Woo-hoo! yeah they created a gorgeous desk for me it's like unreal your desk is beautiful thank you I, I can't like take credit for that it is Dave crazy. from molding mud he's an artist it's insane and great to work with um, so that's wonderful. You find these great people and these great artists here to work with. The actual city of Boise, though, was a bit trying. Um, there are certain things I don't do as a salon because we edge as natural as you can get with it still working. So yeah. ammonia-free color, we're sulfate-free, paraben-free. Even the candles that I burn in the salon have a lead-free wick, and they're 100% organic soy wax. It's very thoughtful and it's very there calculated. are it's very calculated and there are absolutely like no fumes going on and yeah. one of the biggest Which should be like it should make it easier i would right? think yes I, I mean that's what i would think it's not a nail salon with acrylics i'm not doing yeah. perms i'm not doing brazilian blowouts which are gnarly don't do them anyone please um they're really bad and anyway so I just had these really weird hangups and I was trying to give them data supporting like this is why I do the things I do and yeah. here's why I don't need this. Yeah. And I have the explanation as to why exactly. things are this way. Yeah. Exactly. And tried to provide this amount of knowledge and to the point that they pretty much agreed with me, but like that wasn't regulations and they're like sorry. So we actually funneled through the business next door and they will forever have an exposed pipe like an event and I'm, I'm sorry for them um, up through other it, we shoot up I'm in the like a You're half basement, basement. Yeah. yeah so shoot up through four stories of businesses that's not cost effective that's not time like but you don't and have any, to have a fan to pump out chemicals that I don't have and so I said hypothetically if I'm pumping chemicals that I don't use in the salon, but I have to have this fan because I'm a salon. We're going to spend time and energy disrupt all of the local businesses here. How does that make sense? I even found like an offshoot of a plan. I found a fan that yeah. if these harmful chemicals were in my salon, which they are not, it would absorb them and you can dispose of them responsibly. And they said, absolutely not. So they prefer to run a fan and kill that energy and shoot it up through the air that and we're ruin all the, breathing. Ruin the building. It's, yeah, it's ruining the building. It's ruining the quality of air, costing time, energy, money. Just none of it makes I just wish there was a little common sense somewhere. Yeah. Which, or in least, Idaho, you uh, expect How it. about room for judgment? Yes. Yeah. I like, would love that. Room to make a judgment. Yeah. That'd be great. You know, and I bet they probably would like that too. But they would. Like, imagine when someone brings them actual facts and data and they could say, I have enough judgment to make this decision yeah. that, yeah. yes, she's doing X, Y, and Z. Right? 
Yeah, there was one point that I think, and you know, the this particular city inspector, I think he trusted me, and I think that we gained that relationship because I was pushing back so hard. Yeah. Because um, it just it was against what I wanted to do as a business, and it yeah. just didn't make sense. What well, seems and like a waste. Trusted me to the point that like I mixed color and like in front of him in a cup, and I like put it up to his nose, and I was like, smell this, and he took a whiff. Like he trusted me enough to like breathe. Yeah. The most harmful thing that's going on in the salon. He's like, there's nothing there. Yeah, it's fine. It's wild. That's really. But we made it. We made it. Woo-woo-woo. We made it. We made it. We're happy. Yeah. But yes. It's very still happy. A little disappointing. It's a little. It's a little difficult. It's a little disheartening. I had a few inspectors say like, I don't care what you do when I'm gone. Which. Is interesting. Yes, but that's still my check that I'm writing and my time that you're wasting. Right. And so the opening date of business was very much delayed. Also, the procedure was not easy on anybody in the entire building. Yeah. Um, it, it's just pointless a little bit. Yeah. I had another city inspector say, like, this is why businesses go to Meridian. Which would make sense. Which is just tragic. Like, it is tragic. Everybody, Especially when you have a lot of uh, like real estate downtown that's not being utilized. Right. And yeah. it's like, you wonder why it's not being utilized. Yeah. It's like, I can't th- get through planning and zoning or permitting or, you know, things like that. Which I un- obviously understand regulations and having right. them. And yeah. so that we in the future, we don't end up up a creek. But there needs, I feel like even on the behalf of these inspectors, like, they also have to have room for judgment call. Yes. Like someone needs to trust them with their job. Yes, they don't have the authority to make. Yeah, they don't the, have the authority to make. Even if it. they are on board with you. Yeah. I mean, how heartbreaking that would be. I I feel sorry for them. That would be. How would it feel to like to try to do a job where your hands are tied behind your back? Yeah, exactly. And so you just get yelled at all day. Yeah. This is why we own businesses. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> our trade off. We're like, we're like, not. I ain't shit. taking orders from anybody. <laughs> Yeah, let's not get that twisted. But I haven't for a long time, or I don't think I ever really did. But <laughs> my poor parents. It's true. They raise a strong woman. Oh yeah. Yes. A little bit crazy, just a little bit, a little bit crazy. But I'm the fun kind. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So you've been open since January. Yes. We are in March. Yep. And how is it going? How are you having fun? What are you doing? I'm having so much fun. Yeah. I I think I had a heart attack for a moment. Yeah. Uh, a little bit with, I mean, we talked, we, you and I have personally talked about this before, yeah. like with our family being our best asset and also like that voice in our head that we're like, oh my gosh, you're like, you're kidding me. Yeah. But you know, my sister like questioned my pricing and this, like, do you know what town you're in? And do you, yeah. I mean, there's so many things that you could second guess yourself on and totally. the day that you open doors and it's like ghost town, you're like, doo, doo, doo. You're like, like that's a terrifying moment. Yeah. And well, and I think that's part of, like like I said to Brad uh, in a previous interview, I was like, you also have to just remain consistent, right? Like, yes. you have to establish yourself at that price point. This is why I'm doing that. It's like with us, with the bakery, it's like, yeah, our prices are, a little, like, not much, but they're a little bit higher than other people's. You want to know why? It's all organic. It's all non-GMO. It's all made from scratch in-house blends. Like, it, at some point, you have to realize what you're really paying for. And, like, as a consumer, at least for me, it's, like, I'm willing to pay that. Absolutely. If it's going to give me a better quality of life or it's going to be better for my environment, it's going to be better for all these things, I am willing to pay extra for that. Which, how amazing is that? That we have that luxury and that, like, availability to hear this is what's available and why and to be able to choose what's right for you and your body is... It's just unreal and amazing and empowering. I love that. Well, and I grew up in a salon that was like, yeah, there was chemicals everywhere, but that was just what it was. They started yeah. like the eighties. It was like, this is what you did. This More perms, the merrier. The, yes, get that really. Jerry curl. Oh yeah, get it on. <laughs> There's all that toxic chemical nonsense. <laughs> I remember being like, oh, what is that, mom? She's like, just like stand coughing. Back. Just stand back. It'll be okay. Yeah, but it's like, it's also not. It's not good for us. It's also not good for our environment. And right. it's like. At what point do you make that conscious decision to spend better dollars in other places? Yeah. Yeah. And like, if I was, it's funny because I listen to like Grant Cardone or read their books, listen to his books. But it's like one of the things he talks about is like, just because you lower your price doesn't give you any more value for the lower price. 
essentially you're probably going to end up with low, less value because of the fact that you should be charging 75 for this, but now you're going to charge 55 or 65 for it. Your intention is going to be, whether you know it or not, psychologically less. And those people need to realize that the price point needs to be what the price point is for what you're providing. Right. If we keep playing this undercutting game, then no one's going to make any money. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And it's really about placing your money with your, the, like in a place that aligns with your values. Yeah. I really think not to get political, which I think is great to get political, but that's not necessarily what we're talking about right now. But yeah. I think that our vote is nearly worthless right now. And a lot of us are feeling very like disenfranchised from it and that we can't like, that we don't know what to do to help this situation that we're in. Yeah. And I'm a huge believer that where we really vote and what really counts where we spend our money is our money. That is what we have. That's what we have over. I 100% agree. Almost. I mean, certainly within our country, probably also the entire world like our influence is our pocketbook it, it totally isn't is. it isn't if we vote red or blue it's it's where we spend our money and i think choosing to do business with someone like yourself who's focused on things like the health and the quality and you know where it's coming from where it's made how it's done what you're doing with it yeah Yes, exactly. I 100% agree. I have this discussion all the time with people and I'm like, you as a consumer need to be held accountable. And like, if you're going to choose to go to the Walmarts of the world instead of that mom and pop shop down the street that is choosing to make proper like choices, whether that's in regards to fair wage or to what they're purchasing, what ingredients they're putting in, how they're packaging yeah. things, what they're doing, whether they're not you know, conscious about the decisions they're making, that, as a consumer, you're making that decision. You're, you're essentially telling them that, no, what Walmart or whoever yeah. is doing is okay with me. I have no moral obligation to that. But it's, it is. It's your money is what you've earned. It's how you spend it. It is your vote in a way. And it's like, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you can choose to go source stuff in China or do whatever it is, but yeah. at some point, your consumer is going to become educated and the consumer is not going to like what you are doing. Right. When they have no clean air to breathe, or there's plastic everywhere, or you know what I mean, or their body gets sick because you've been putting toxins in their food, who are they gonna choose? Exactly. And you know what? If the consumer's not wise enough to know that, shame on the consumer. It seems like a very clear choice in circumstances like you're talking about, like illness or, you know, water health like the health of our bodies of water is yeah. crazy. Like accessible clean drinking water is so easy to us here but it's really not like that when you travel and in the rest of the world no, it's, it's not. very eye-opening and i mean heartbreaking but just nothing is worth nothing's worth that to me um i personally used to represent a brand and was a top educator for care sauce which is a luxury line owned by l'oreal and i loved my artistic team there i love the opportunities that it brought me I loved so much about it and I was I was very much conflicted with working there because you know L'Oreal is like the number one offender <laughs> yeah or at least up there you know what I mean there's yeah. a handful of big companies and there's really maybe not even a handful but yeah there's a um, I was lucky enough to be in it at an international meeting in Berlin and I brought up the animal testing thing thinking like oh if I get high enough in this company maybe somebody will listen to me this yeah. is what us artists care about like yeah. I was there to be that artist voice and they were like, kick the puppy, like put her, put her in her kennel. No, so like, we don't. Shh, we don't talk about that. We don't. Shh, you're not talking about price margins, shh. so we don't care. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, whoa, that like that really had to be an sunk eye in. Eye opening. And when I, um, at the time that I left as an artist, it was, you know, I quit carrying them at my salon, oh, and yeah. I there were there were major waves. But, I'm sure. you know, we have to have room to progress and we have to have room to make the right choice. And, and it goes back to holding people accountable, too. Yeah. And sometimes people don't like what I have to say because I tend to do that. But it's like, at the same time, if anybody ever wanted, like, to ask me about my products or how we do things or what those things are, I'm open to talk to them about that. And it's, right. And those decisions have been made by my partner and I because 
of those reasons. And it's like, I would expect the same. If I come like to a business that I patron at and I want to know like, how is it that you're doing this? Because this has come up in my, in my realm. Like, what, what are you doing about this problem or this issue? Like, what do you think about this? And if you're not willing to have that discussion, then you no longer need my business. What else is, yeah, why? Why should I support why? you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and why wouldn't you be partnering with somebody in some capacity to offset that then? Maybe you don't have the ability to change that yet because of financial reasons, but what can we do to partner with something like a nonprofit that, that helps Love that. negate that? Right. Yeah. Just try. Just try a little bit. I, I'm so with you on this 100%. Like, just do what you say. Say what you do. Be yeah. honest about whatever it is you're doing. Let the consumer decide if that's for them or not. And just try. Yeah. And, and then the rest genuine. of the world should maybe try to help these people who are actually <laughs> trying instead of By trying to way, bury their business before they couch. open. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Like, hey, I'm trying to do things like really hard with all of my heart and all pure intentions. Like, I feel that. Maybe this is a small business we should support. Yeah. And maybe other people who are really trying to do things the right way for our communities and for our planet yes. and for all of our happy furry little fur babies. Yes. Maybe we help those people instead of just instead of just trying find to them push them and find them, them and but like oh I feel that. It's like for our development up on the bench it's we know one of those things where it's like I want to be able to do these things that are sustainable and I want to yeah. be able to build it in a way that is not going to, you know, create the essentially the same impact that creating a building would be doing, you know, right. and do all these things. But it's like if you continue to restrict me as much as you're restricting me, you don't allow me to do those things. And and you're basically in turn taking away those aspects I was trying to give back. Yeah. And like the whole concept is to help other small businesses, you know, make, like remove or lessen that barrier to entry so that people that have big ideas can come in and utilize those spaces and do those things. And it's like, Stop trying to like strong arm people that are just trying to do the right thing. Yes. No matter who you are or what you are, like preach mama. Good intention. Yes. Good intention. Yeah. Let it happen. Yeah. And just and, and also like give the people that should be allowed a voice or at least a decision. Let them make the decision. Love Trust that. them enough to make the decision. Amen. Yes. Don't get me started. Yes. I will go ranting. I love it. I love that about you. So are you filling the salon? Is it just you in there now? It's just me in there now. Okay. Um, I'm looking for stylists for the right fit. There has to be the right um, fit. Has to be the right fit. Number one, you know, that's again with not compromising anything. Yeah. You can teach, and I am more than willing to teach. I love to teach. It's a huge passion of mine. Um, but it has to be the right the right fit, yeah. yeah. So if it ends up being just me for a while, that's okay. Yeah. And I plan for that. Um, I would prefer... You know, the energy and the excitement to have people in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just open to whatever the wind is, is blowing in. It's awesome. Yeah. And then you exciting. do events. You do partner with other local businesses like yes, Mona Matcha and then yes, you're doing something they're for amazing. Yeah, I've the community here of other young entrepreneurs and people in business that are just creating there's so much magic in Boise right now like I really feel yeah. like it's just like budding up like there's this whole I don't it's just magic it's like this little ball <laughs> that's like getting created and there's this amazing group of people such as yourself that are so welcoming and so excited and it's all the conversation is only about like how can we get better how can we yeah. support each other how can we make this work for all of us and all of these creative ideas are flowing around and everybody is just so excited about them from you know creation to actual like execution yeah is amazing I've been working like you said with Mona Matcha with yourself um with She is Boise which is just this beautiful force that's putting people like us together and uh, like very non-boring networking yeah um but every idea I feel like that I get you know, I shoot out there, I feel like it's coming back in such a cool way in Boise with people from every sort of walk of life, from all sort like a lot of Boise locals, a lot of people who moved out of Idaho and then are back in Idaho, yeah. a lot of people who just wanted what Idaho represents to them and what Boise is and Well there's so much opportunity here. So much opportunity. There's a ton. Like and it, 
I left Boise for three years and lived in Vegas, and then I came back mm -hmm. to build the, the my park, and it's it just blows me away. Like I can't ever tell people enough. Like if you have an idea or you want to do something, just ask somebody. Just reach out and ask that yeah. person. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna be willing to help you. If there was Scrooge McDuck and they don't want to, <laughs> there's Scrooge somebody what? McDuck. <laughs> There's somebody else that will. Like, there really is. And so it's like, you can reach out to the right people yeah. and start doing, like, yeah. brand partnerships and doing different things and having conversations. What are you waiting for? Like, you're never going to have a better opportunity r than right now in this right town. Right now. Because this town is just going to get bigger. There's going to be more competition. And there's going to be more people coming in. And they're going to see the opportunity and they're going to take it. Yeah. So what are you waiting for? Pull the trigger. The, the time is now. Time is now, my friend. There are a lot. I definitely feel like it's tangible. Like you feel that energy that's like about to burst right here. Like, yeah, I, I it's feel the like call before the, the storm. Yeah, it's like yeah. that little art, like entrepreneurial, like <laughs> art man, business little bubble bud that yeah. is just about to like. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. Okay. Nice. It's it's very exciting to be a part of, and it's it's very cool to collaborate with other people that I know I love it the same we should life. have like a giant collaboration party yes like all the fun entreprenuurs and everybody yes. just, oh my birthday's coming up <gasps> perfect happy birthday. Have, birthday thanks I'll be 30 well, I'm gonna be Ooh. old I'm really old it's okay it's not old <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've lived a lot longer not than old that, well thank you so much thank do you do you have so fun. do you have any last piece of advice or what would you tell someone thinking about starting a business? Hmm. What would you say to somebody whose parents didn't want them to go to cosmetology <laughs> school? I am grateful that I have my bachelor's degree just in case I ever lose a hand or something. But that, that's, that's valid. <laughs> that is valid. Yeah. It's a, it, and it was fun. So thanks folks for, you know, thanks for pushing whipping me, me, you know, how they do. Um, I guess my advice would be to to be really particular and to trust your gut and to never get into any situation because you feel like you need it any yeah. partnership because you feel like it like there's one part of you that is lacking or the one part that you could do something i think that protect your energy and protect your vision for people who support your energy and love your energy yeah and support your vision and want to protect your vision and empower your vision, mm -hmm. the people who are your cheerleaders only should be the people in your life and yeah. certainly the only people in your business. And I don't Definitely. care if that's an accountant, an attorney, a business partner. Yeah. There's, they need to be there's, no, there's zero space for that. Yeah. Well, and you don't need people bringing in any kind of negativity. To, exactly. Especially into your business. Right? Because that will transfer to everywhere else. Yep. That's, it's hard to carry on your own, on your own shoulders. Oh, yeah. Support yeah. system is major. I thank God every day yep. for my support system because those poor people put up with me so much. <laughs> we love you. We love you so we much. We love you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. If thank I did not you. have them, I would be so out of luck. It's so funny. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you're right. It's like don't compromise your values or your beliefs. Yep. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just, just don't. You'll, you'll kick yourself later if you do. Yep. Surround yourself with great, positive people. All jacked up on Mountain Dew. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Go Co Juice. Go Co Juice. Yeah, yeah matcha. Oh, boys, like, yeah, on matcha. Matcha is yeah. much healthier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Matcha. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. This was really fun. This was super fun. And if you anybody needs their hair done. This woman's a magician. Don't look at mine right now, but she's very good. And if you're interested oh, and you believe in a very natural style salon and you're looking for a chair, talk to her. But she's only going to take you if you're the right fit. So don't get all twisted <laughs> if she doesn't take you. And thank you. Good to, energy only. Good vibes only. Good vibes only. Period. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Lost Grove for having us. Thanks to Argos Productions also for putting up with us and listening to us. Ramble. And I hope you all have a good day. Bye.